Vera Kali alongside me, captain of India, and Aaron Pollard from the West Indies. Gentlemen, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules. Uh, on the eve of another T20 uh, World Cup here in the UAE in Oman, the big KP. Good evening, my friend. Nice to see a smile on your face. You weren't there in 2016. You were watching on from afar, but what a fabulous moment for the West Indies cricket side. And I'm sure you'll be looking to emulate those fortunes this time around. Yeah, of course. Um, obviously, unfortunately, I wasn't there because of um because of injury. But you know, I think the way the guys you know played in that game and throughout that tournament, um, you know, was fantastic. Um, Carlos, you know, in the back end, they hitting those four sixes in that last over. Um, a lot of memories, you know, in our camp, you know, because of that. So, you know, we're excited. We're looking forward to, to another opportunity to try to defend, you know, this trophy. Verat, you obviously were. Um hosting the tournament in 2016. You had to watch on from home as uh, the West Indies and England did battle there. How uh, frustrating was that and how much did that spur you on to maybe go one step further and win this trophy? Yeah, it was it was uh, quite frustrating to, to go out in the way that we did, but uh, to a deserving side, I thought. West Indies was uh, the best team in the tournament by far, uh, playing the best cricket as a team, I felt, and they thoroughly deserved to win the tournament. Um, we had a heartbreak in Sri Lanka in 2014 as well, where we lost in the finals and we lost in the semi-finals in 2016. So that tells us that um, as, as far as our T20 cricket is concerned, we've always had a strong side and now more so than ever because a lot of youngsters from the IPL who've got experience have now come into their roles wonderfully well and are players who can change the game at any stage. And we have beaten prominent teams in T20 series in the in the recent past um, in very close contests. So we're quite confident heading into this World Cup, um, knowing that we have a strong side and potentially uh, we could go deep in the tournament. And if we end up being in the in the knockout stages, maybe go one step further this time. Um, no, one of one of the great all rounders in Kyron Pollard and one of the the masters of the modern day batting Vera Kohli. Um, Polly, your IPL experience, not just for yourself. Well, for all your uh, teammates in this West Indies side, um, years of experience in playing the UAE as well. Uh, how useful will that be? Um, I thought it was good for us. Um, and again, not only us, but you know, all the players who are involved in this World Cup get an opportunity to, you know, get a feel for what the UAE has to offer. Um, and I'm sure some interesting sort of stats, you know, comparisons, you know, different sort of trends might have come out of the recently concluded um, IPL. So. You have to take all that into consideration, take the, the context of the surfaces, the atmosphere, and, you know, put it within your game plan and try to, you know, plan to decode, you know, the opposition. So, you know, for us, I think, you know, most of our guys got the opportunity to play recently here, you know, in, in, in the IPL in the UAE. And, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, trying to hit the ground running and trying to start on that, you know, sort of positive note and, you know, get that first, you know, two points and see, you know, what happens, you know, after that. All right, just while we're talking about the IPL, uh, your great mate, Dwayne Bravo, DJ Bravo, Sir Bravo, as he's now uh, crowned himself. He said once he turned his phone on last night, he was going to give you a text to let you know about the amount of trophies he's won. Was that in your inbox? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was there, you know, early up. But I think, again, he has shown, you know, time and time again, the individual and, you know, what he brings to any team. And, you know, for Chennai to go on and win in this IPL, I thought it was a fantastic, you know, sort of team effort. And for him, you know, personally, you know, continue to, you know, do what he's accustomed to doing in the back end of the innings and try to close off matches for teams. And hopefully, you know, the form that he's shown in the IPL so far, he can come and, you know, no pressure on him since he's Sir. Now, we'll be all looking to Sir to do well for us, you know, in this campaign here. But, you know, having said that, um, I said, you know, well played to, to Chennai Super Kings, well played to DJ Bravo and his team. And Again, now that is done and dusted, you know, we look forward to, you know, a major tournament, which is a World Cup, where we have to represent our nation and try to represent our nation well. Uh, very well said. Uh, Vera Kohli, MSD, back in the dressing rooms, uh, part of the mentoring and the backroom staff. How pivotal will he be? Yeah, massive experience. Um, uh, he's, he's quite excited with uh, getting back into this environment. Um, he's always been a, a mentor for all of us when we were starting our careers through till the time that he played with the team. And now he has an opportunity to continue to do that same work again, um, especially for the younger guys who are, um, you know, playing major tournaments, early stages in their careers. 
um, just experience uh, that he's gained over the years and just having conversations with him around the game such practical inputs um, such you know uh, intricate details of where the game is going and how we can improve our games by that 1 or 2% uh, which always makes the difference when he's in the leadership role in any team so we are absolutely delighted to have him back in this environment and uh, his presence will certainly boost the the morale of the team even further and give us a lot more confidence than we already have as a team uh Karen Pollard Fabian Allen has been superb for the West Indies in the recent past especially in the power play um we've seen a lot of spin obviously surfaces might be a little bit slow a little bit low do you still see Fabian Allen playing a big role with ball in hand in that first six um again he has a big role to play for us you know overall 20 overs um Yes, in the first six overs, you know, he has done a job for us in the recent past. Um, but it all will depends on the opposition and, you know, sort of matchups that, you know, we come up against. Um, so, but I'm sure he's looking forward to, you know, playing this tournament. Um, he's a young, you know, exciting talent. And we just, you know, want to give these sort of guys opportunity to, to do well. So try to put him in the best situation where as he can be the best, you know, for this team. And you know, hopefully he can shine and show the world, you know, what he has, you know, as an individual and as a cricketer. There at uh, Bhuvi Kumar struggled to get um, too much out of the air in terms of movement in during the backstage of the IPL. In fact, most seam bowlers and swing bowlers didn't get any movement in the air. Um, is that an area of concern for Bhuvi, or are you happy enough with this form? Uh, no, not at all. Um, his his economy rates still continue to be top notch something that he's always been known for and his experience comes to the fore under pressure if you see the game that we played against sunrisers the last game where he had to close out the game against the um, ab devilliers you know probably um, one of the two or three most destructive lower order finishers in the t20 game um uh, you know explained or spoke volumes of uh, what experience bhuvi brings on the field whenever we play just the understanding of hitting the areas um, according to the dimensions of the field and what balls to bowl at what time. Even the, the fact that he, he bowls uh, length so well and so consistently, uh, which is not an easy thing to get away in T20 cricket, especially with the new ball. It's quite an underrated thing. Um, I think his experience in, and his accuracy has always been priceless for the team. And he's back to uh, being at full fitness, which augurs really well for our team. And... Um, I'm sure that, you know, with the new ball, he'll definitely get some kind of assistance through the tournament. Um, and whatever little is there on offer, uh, Bhuvi knows how to make uh, the maximum use out of that. So his experience, as I said, is going to be priceless for us. Uh, experience is a word you've used a few times. Then let's talk about Ravi Ashwin, uh, Virat, back in the T20 format for the first time since 2017. Is he testimony to someone who's always trying to evolve and get better? Um, to force his way back into the shortest format? Yes, definitely. I mean, you know, the one thing that, that um, Ashwin has really improved on is, is um, uh, bowling with a lot of courage in white ball cricket. If you saw the IPL in the last couple of years, he's bowled difficult overs. He's bowled against the top players in the IPL, um, you know, the likes of Polly and, and power hitters and, you know, not being shy to put the ball um, in the right areas where spinners can kind of get mostly get intimidated by, you know, the way the way Polly hits the ball and the power hitters in the IPL. But Ashwin believed in his skill sets and we felt like uh, the way he was bowling and his variations now and the control over pace is something which is, again, a lot of experience, a guy who's played so much international cricket and now when he's at his confident best, these guys can, can go in there and, and change the game with their spells. So, hence, I think Ashwin has, has been rewarded for... Um, reviving his white ball um, skills altogether. Um, he was a regular feature for us back in the day. Then he fell off a little bit because the wrist spinners were, were the ones who were in demand, uh, mostly through that middle period. But now the finger spinners with accuracy have come back into the game again. So I think we also have to evolve as a team um, with the evolving trend of the game. And and Ash and, and the likes of Jadeja as well, you know, performing beautifully the way he's gone about in the IPL as well, just being a finger spinner and bowling with a lot of courage. Um, just all goes really well for the team. As I said, these guys can also be very consistent being finger spinners and know exactly what to do in what situation. Uh, Kyron, just on you know, the finger spin element, uh, it's something you've got plenty of on your side. Uh, is it a trend in T20 cricket or just something that's happening in the here and the now as opposed to teams maybe 
favoring finger spin for the time being over wrist spin? Well, again, as you know, you just previously mentioned at one point in time, you know, the wrist spinners used to dominate is if you want a right arm wrist spinner or left arm back at the arm Chinaman. At different times, the variation, you know, used to be ones where captains, you know, look at. But in the recent past, for whatever reason or not, don't know if it's conditions or what, the finger spinners have come back into favor. And as he's rightly said, um, they have more control in different situations and difficult situations as well as to where they want to put the ball when it's actually needed. So if you want a guy to consistently bowl to a bigger side of a ground and you have a finger spinner bowling there, he has more control in order to do that. So, you know, for us, um, we have, you know, a couple of finger spinners in our armory, you know, as well. And, you know, hopefully we can maximize the dimensions, you know, of the ground and whatever spin is there at whatever given time, we can be able to use that, you know, against the, the opposition as well. Um, for us, in terms of experience, yes, our spinners might not be experienced, but that can work in our favor, you know, as well. India-Pakistan first game, uh, I suppose you don't need any extra incentive, but is this probably the top game for any Indian cricketer to come up against Pakistan in the World Cup? You know, I can <clears throat> I can talk from personal experience. I've, I've honestly never felt so. Um, I've always approached this game as just another game of cricket. I know there's a lot of hype created around this game, more so with ticket sales and and the demands of, of tickets and right now the value of those tickets are ridiculously high. So that's all I know. You know, my friends asking me for tickets left, right and centre and me saying no. It's probably the only change that I experienced from any other game. But apart from that, I don't think that we, we make anything extra out of this game. Um, for us, it is just a game of cricket that has to be played in the right way, in the way that we know we can. And... Um, Yes, the environment you can say is different on the outside. From the fans' point of view, it's definitely louder. It's definitely um, more excitement in the air. But apart from that, from the players' point of view, we, we stay as professional as we can and always approach this game as the mo in the most normal way possible. Very good. And just a note to everyone out there, Virat has no more tickets for the India-Pakistan game. Um, Kyron, Roston Chase, uh, what a turnaround for Roston Chase, really. A couple of years ago, not selected and not signed in the CPL. He's gone from strength to strength and now sees himself as a potential uh, Marlon Samuels-esque role. Uh, Marlon obviously had two cracky performances in World Cup finals. Uh, just a word on Rostin Chase and his, his comeback really in T20 cricket. I would say not really a comeback. Um, I think he has featured, you know, for West Indies and Test cricket and, you know, ODI cricket of recently. And it's just a matter of an individual evolving his game, you know, trying to be the best he can be in all three formats. So he came and he got an opportunity, you know, it's in Lucia Stars. And again, it's just a matter of putting guys in the right, you know, positions. And he has actually, you know, delivered for them in the last couple of years or so. Um, and he has been rewarded you know, with his performances. And, you know, that goes to show that, you know, persons out there are looking at every time you get opportunity to play cricket, you want to do well. And he has actually done well, you know, for himself and the type of cricket that he plays, you know, as an individual, you know, fits right into our balance in, in terms of in the middle of our power hitters. Um, we need that sort of guy who can, you know, maneuver the ball in the middle overs and hit the occasional boundary here and there and keep the run rate going over. And that's an area for us that we constantly keep working on. And I thought we, we thought that you know he was the right fit at this present time, you know, to come into the squad. So, you know, we look forward to see what he can offer. And again, you know, for an individual in white ball cricket, he hasn't played much white ball cricket. So, you know, the teams might not have much data on him, or they might have because there's an archive full of you know runs, wickets, and all what guys do at different points in time, you know, with all teams. So we're looking forward for to reprint the rewards of his form that he had in CPL and you know having a big impact, you know, for us in that middle order. Uh, Vera, 2007 T20 World Cup uh, winners. Who can forget Mahendra Singh Downey with that lovely, long, flowing hair? Just talk us through the memories watching that match and what it did for Indian cricket and yourself and your own career. A uh, huge impact. I think um, it was, I, I would not say unexpected, but um, no one really knew a lot about the T20 tournament back in the day. It just started a year back. Um, and then after the T20 World Cup win, the, the, the emergence of IPL was really something that changed the game completely. But that World Cup, we fondly remember watching um, and keenly uh, watching this young Indian team 
achieve things at the world stage. Um, and as I said, everyone thought, okay, it's T20 cricket uh, initially, but then we understood the impact of, of a World Cup win. Um, a few years down the line when T20 cricket became what it has, what, what it became eventually and what it is today. But for a young Indian team to go out there and achieve um, what, what they ended up achieving was something very special and very inspirational. We saw a lot of young guys taking the field and making impact performances. So what that did to a youngster like me was give me extra motivation and, and you know, uh, gave me um, more belief that, that I could also go out there and, and perform at the highest level at a young age. And I think that was a remarkable achievement by a young leader leading an even younger team to a World Cup title um, and very, very happy and exciting memories. Uh, Virat, if I may just uh, touch on some of your T20 uh, extraordinary feats, really. Most runs in T20 internationals, cricket over 3,000, best average in T20 cricket, uh, best average in a T20 World Cup, most 50s, most 50s in a World Cup. How do you remain so consistent in a very unforgiving format of the game? Well, the, look, I, I will... This is obviously my personal point of view. I've always felt that the basics of the game will hold you in good stead in any format that you play. And then uh, it's adaptability. It's it's your um, ability to, to look at your game, um, even in the most technical manner, and understand how to apply that, that pattern of your game to different formats. Uh, for me, T20 cricket has always been an opportunity to pro probably... You know, just just extend the shots that I play in any other format, uh, and I could reap the rewards of that field, placing the ball in the field, understanding my strengths. I've never been a guy who goes out there and and tries to hit the big shots because that that's not my strength. There are guys obviously who specialize in that, and that's their strength. Um, so I I've always stuck to my strengths, and as long as I can I can keep making an impact for my team um, and play according to the situation is something that's always driven me forward. And then. I think mainly it's that when you when you're playing the situation and you just want to win the game for your team anyhow you find ways to do it whether it's running between the wickets hitting fours hitting sixes whatever it is you always find a way when you have the desire to make your team win and then your game adapts to any situation that's that's personally given my experience Chris Gale leads 97 runs, Kyron Pollard to become the highest run scorer in T20 World Cups. The universe boss, he's had a bit of a break. Uh, he's fresh, he's ready to go. How exciting will it be for the world to see Chris Gale in action? Um, again, no words to describe, you know, what he has done, you know, for us, you know, in World Cups and T20 World Cups and T20 cricket, you know, around the world, you know, as well as individual. The guy with the most amount of runs, most amount of sixes, um, the fear that he instills in bowlers when he's standing at the opposite end. Um, so for him, yes, it might be 97 runs away, but you know, I don't think he'll be looking at you know that. Um, I think the main goal, you know, for us and for him in conversation is trying to win a World Cup and defend a title. And you know, he's looking forward to that. Um, he did what he he did in terms of taking a break, you know, recently in the IPL, um, because he think he, he needed it. Um, because obviously this tournament's another big tournament for him and. I'm hoping that everyone understood, you know, the, the nature of what transpired because, you know, living in bubbles after bubbles sometimes is very, very difficult. And if even a guy who enjoys himself in any given situation can't take it, then it's going to be difficult for, you know, some of us. But he's looking forward to it. Um, we've had a couple of training sessions and, you know, hopefully he can come and, you know, deliver for us. I will say, you know, we're backing him to do well and we're going to continue to do that till the, till the end. Uh, Karen. Nicholas Poran had a very interesting interview and he spoke about six hitting and we don't need to run singles. We hit more sixes and the stats don't lie. West did more sixes than anyone else. Um, what a wonderful way to go about your cricket. Is that natural? Is it something you've tried to instill or coach Phil Simmons or just the way you go about your business as cricketers? Well, you've seen it all around the world. That's the way how we, we sort of you know go about our cricket. You know, even when you look at it in the IPL, if you watch the stats, which look at the team that hit the most sixes this tournament. Um, it's something that, you know, it's it's there. Um, we have an opportunity, whereas that's part of our strength. But, you know, a lot of people and a lot of different analysts at different times keep harping on, you know, sort of dot balls and singles and ones and twos. But to us, everything is important, but we still have to play to our strength, whichever that is. I'm not going to say it because then the headlines might be our strength is just hitting sixes. So, you know, having said that for us, 
which we want to try to play a game of T20 cricket. We have our strengths, we have our weaknesses, and we continue to, you know, work, you know, on our weaknesses and continue to keep our strength as our strength. And let's see what happens. We have a lot of powerful guys in our lineup, but maybe the situation might warrant it, or maybe not. But we also have guys who are able to maneuver the strike, run between the wickets. So we're looking forward to trying to play complete games of cricket or wrong. And let the results, you know, sort of take care of itself, you know, in the end. Well, I witnessed those sixes in Antigua back in March uh, of Dan and Jaya from Sri Lanka. Um, wonderful striking. Uh, Vera Kohli, I must give you a bit of a tough question. I've been quite good to you today. I think uh, Yusvendra Chahal left out of the squad. It must have been a difficult call, was it? It was. Um, <clears throat> it was a challenging call. Um, but... You know, we decided to back Rahul Chahar for a reason. He's he's bowled amazingly well in the last couple of years in the IPL and a guy who bowls with pace. Um, he did really well in Sri Lanka recently when he played as well. And uh, against England at home as well, he was he was someone who bowled um, those difficult overs. And, you know, we, we believe that heading into this tournament, the wickets are going to get slower and slower and and guys who probably bowl with a lot more pace as you saw in the later stages of the tournament as well were the ones who were able to trouble batsmen those who didn't didn't probably give the ball too much air and rahul definitely has um, you know those strengths naturally with him as a leg spinner and um, you know is someone who always attacks the stumps and and bowls in areas that potentially can get you wickets at any stage and uh, that is the factor that that tipped um, that that balance over to towards Rahul a little, little bit, not taking anything away from Chahal. I think he's been brilliant when he's played for India. And um, this was a tough call. You know, that's what picking a World Cup squad uh, is always like. You have limited number of spots and you can't potentially have everyone fit, fit into that squad. Uh, just before I let you go, Virat, uh, there's been a lot of talk in the media about Ravi Shastri maybe moving on and Raul Javid coming in. If that is the case, is lifting this World Cup the perfect end to a, what's been a wonderful relationship between yourself and Ravi Shastri. Yeah, look, I mean, our ultimate goal is to is to win the World Cup. I, I honestly have no idea, uh, you know, exactly what's happening on that front yet. We haven't had any detailed discussions with anyone. Um, but winning the World Cup is definitely our goal, like any other team. But I think I think what we've been able to create in the last five six years is is beyond titles and beyond tournaments, to be honest. Um, we've been able to create a culture which which I think is going to be uh, lasting a long time, uh, where people want to be the best they can be when they enter the Indian cricket team, the fittest they can be. And that culture we've, we've driven with utmost passion and utmost honesty, which we hope will will continue to be the case in years to come. But yes, winning a winning a ICC tournament will definitely be a wonderful moment for for all of us for for him as coach for me as captain it'll be an amazing achievement and uh, something that we are absolutely um, you know motivated to do so um, and we will give everything that we have uh, Kyra Paul before you leave just a word on your backroom staff they often don't get much of a mention in the limelight you've got some great coaches Phil Simmons Trevor Penny Monty Desai and uh, obviously your analysts uh, in this day and age the analysts Srikant they're doing a wonderful job for Cricket West Indies yeah, um, you know, these guys don't get the praise that, you know, sometimes they deserve and the amount of work that they do behind the scenes, you know, to prepare us individuals to go out and perform on the cricket field. And, you know, these guys work tirelessly, you know, behind the scenes. And, you know, we appreciate each and everything that they do for us, but not only to mention so the coaching staff, but, say, but the entire management team, um, from our manager, the media analysts, um, trainers, everybody. Um, it's, it's, it's a hell of a lot. And these guys put in the hours, they put in the time, time and time again. And, you know, hopefully, as we said, winning a World Cup is not winning a World Cup only for players and the captain or whatever. It's winning a World Cup for the entire management staff, for the entire people of the Caribbean. And that's something that we have been working towards over the last, you know, year, 18 months or so. And, you know, hopefully we can, you know, deliver that. So all hands on deck, you know, going into this tournament. And, you know, we're looking, you know, looking forward to, you know, continue to do well and, as I said, hopefully defend, you know, our title. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. I know it's, it's Saturday evening. I'll let you go for your supper and an early night to bed. I uh, wish you all the best. Have a great tournament and see you very soon.